from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It is July the 2nd, just after 7 p.m. at our Florida launch site. The SpaceX team is preparing for launch of the Falcon 9 in just under 10 minutes from now. Launch is currently scheduled at 23 hours, 36 minutes universal time, or 7.36 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. I'm John Isbrucker, Falcon 9 Principal Integration Engineer and I'll be bringing you updates and information during today's webcast. Now today's is SpaceX's third launch attempt in just nine days. Our first launch, Bulgaria Sat 1, was on June 23rd. And it was just a week ago on June 25th where we had the flight of Iridium 2 and its 10 satellites. And now thanks to the great work by the ground, vehicle, and payload teams, we're preparing for launch of Intelsat 35E minutes from now. And as a reminder, our first reflown Dragon spacecraft is planned for splashdown in the Pacific Ocean tomorrow morning, completing its 31-day trip to the International Space Station. It's been a great couple of weeks here at SpaceX as we count down to the liftoff of Intelsat 35E. Today's launch is from Launch Complex 39A that you can see on the webcast right now. Complex 39A is one of two launch complexes on NASA's Kennedy Space Center that were used for launches of the Saturn V in the Apollo program and the 135 space shuttle launches. Now to the left of the view is the hangar. It's at the edge of Complex 39A and you can see the hangar in the bottom right of your monitor currently. The hangar houses both Falcon 9's and Falcon Heavy stages. Final integration of the rocket with the payload is also performed in this hangar. From there, we roll up that long uphill ramp to the, what we call the crown of the pad. You can see the pad is slightly elevated above the surrounding landscape. This provides for a large flame bucket to channel the thrust away from the rocket. Now, the pad facilities include behind the Falcon 9, the fixed service structure topped off with the massive lightning rod on top. And then to the left is the rotating service structure. That's currently being demolished by SpaceX. It's no longer needed after the space shuttle program. On the pad itself, in front of the fixed service structure is the Falcon 9, two-stage rocket, 43-foot long fairing on top, inside of which is the Intelsat 35E satellite. Now there's no recovery on the first stage. You can see this view shows no landing legs. We also did not install grid fins on the first stage. So the mission coverage today will focus solely on second stage as it heads to orbit. We do plan to bring you mission coverage through spacecraft separation today. Just inside T minus six minutes, 45 seconds, our first status report where we look at the four factors. Today, the good news is the Falcon 9 team working no issues as we head to an on-time launch just minutes from now. First stage of the Falcon 9, we're continuing to load liquid oxygen. We have finished kerosene loading on both the uh, second stage and we've just wrapped up on first stage. We are also loading liquid oxygen on the second stage. Propellant loading will finish between T minus three and T minus two minutes. We're currently chilling in the nine Merlin 1D engines with liquid oxygen in preparation for launch. The spacecraft team went to internal power T minus 35 minutes, working no issues on the Intelsat satellite. The range is ready to support from air and sea, and the good news is that the weather, it looked iffy earlier the last couple of days, but it looks very good right now for an on-time launch, both at ground level and at the upper altitude winds. So at T minus 545, everything is go on the rocket. Now for more information on the mission and capabilities of the epic Intelsat 35E spacecraft and system, we have a short video for you with Steve Spangler, CEO of Intelsat. Thank you for joining us to watch the launch of Intelsat 35E the fourth of our Intelsat Epic high-throughput satellites. 
Today's launch continues the epic journey that we began in January of 2016. As Intelsat 35E is launched into space and placed into service, the performance of our global network will be enhanced yet again. IS 35E will deliver innovative satellite services designed especially for our customers at 325.5 degrees east. The Intelsat 35E satellite features C-band and KU-band services configured in spot beams and wide beams. It allows our C-band customers to benefit from the high performance of the Intelsat EPIC design. This satellite also features a tailored KU-band beam that supports one of the leading DTH networks in the Caribbean region. And as customers begin to experience Intelsat EPIC, they understand the benefit of using the industry's first all-digital commercial satellite platform. This provides any beam to any beam connectivity and maximum configuration possibilities. This is especially relevant to the community on Intelsat 35E, which includes many wireless operators and network service providers that are transitioning from the Intelsat 903 satellite. On behalf of Intelsat's employees around the world, I'd like to express our appreciation to our manufacturer, Boeing, and our launcher, SpaceX, for their commitment to excellence and for delivering a successful program for Intelsat. I also want to recognize the Intelsat team for their work on Intelsat 35V. I am honored to serve alongside the brightest and most talented people this industry has to offer. We appreciate and applaud your efforts to make Intelsat 35V a success. Lastly, thank you to our customers for joining us in this epic journey. Wishing us all a successful mission. Go Intelsat 35V. We're just inside T-minus three minutes and 30 seconds. All continues to go well for an on-time launch at 36 minutes after the hour. Currently out at Launch Complex 39A, the clamp arms have been opening up around the second stage in preparation for the initial retract of the strong back around the Falcon 9. Same time, we've just heard the call that the thrust vector control motions, the checkout of the actuators that guide the upper stage engine on stage two, have completed. They looked good. Next major activity is going to be continued retraction of the strong back. It moves about a degree and a half away from the rocket. At liftoff, it will then move the rest of the way to the position of 77 and a half degrees uh, above horizontal. Big event, T minus one minute. The flight computer will go to startup. We will then take over the internal sequence that finishes with ignition of the nine Merlin engines just before T zero. At full thrust, at T-0, we command liftoff. The Falcon 9 begins the flight to space into the first of two orbits planned for today's mission. So currently, T-2 minus two minutes, 20 seconds. Everything looks good. We're going to listen and watch to the launch of Falcon 9 with Intelsat 35E. Stage two locks closed out. Falcon 9 is on internal power. Vehicles in self align. FTS announced AFTS is ready for launch. AFTS is ready for launch. Gas close house is complete. VC verify F9s in startup. Falcon 9s in startup. Stage 1, stage 2, press for flight. LD verify go for launch. Go for launch. Minus 30. Stage 2 at liftoff pressures. T 
minus 20. Falcon 9, let's configure for flight. 2 minus 10, 9. Got a launch abort. John Esbrecher on the webcast net here in Hawthorne, California. We were inside T minus 10 seconds. We've had an abort in the countdown sequence. We're waiting to hear more information right now. Currently, the team is going through the safing procedure of the Falcon 9, and we'll wait a minute, see if we can get some information on what caused the abort. Back with you again. We're still waiting for word on Countdown Net for the cause of the abort. We just heard, did hear the call out that the scrub safing sequence is underway. This is a standard procedure. We go through this every time we static fire a Falcon 9 in Texas and at the launch sites. So this is not unusual to the team. However, because it is a scrub safing, we expect that this will end our launch attempts for today, given that we only had a 59 minute window. But we're going to stay here for just another minute in case we can get some information on what caused the abort. Again, we were inside of 10 seconds when we had the abort. CLC we're waiting to find out what had happened on the Falcon 9 or possibly on the ground systems. LC Launch Director and Captain. Go ahead. Okay, we had a, a vehicle abort criteria violated at T minus 10 seconds. Uh, GNC criteria, we're still looking into what that is. This time, we're not going to be able to get a recycle in today without uh, going past the end of the window. So we're officially scrubbed. Let's go ahead and put a 24 hour recycle into work. Copy that. John Ensperger again, as you heard, countdown one, as they went through their safing procedure, the team does reach a point where the engineers brief out what the cause of the abort was. In this case, you heard the SpaceX launch director discuss this as a GNC criteria abort. This is a computer abort that happened at T minus 10 seconds, where we're looking at the status of the guidance system and the flight hardware that supports it. It appears that something was out of limits. The computers stopped the countdown before we got into the engine ignition sequence. Unfortunately, though, as we heard the launch director state, 
we're not going to be able to recycle the countdown in the time that we have left in the window and make another attempt today. We do have, obviously, the data from the countdown and the abort. The team will be able to look at that. That will give us an opportunity to assess when we might be able to launch again, but it will not be today. Now, as a reminder, there is a backup launch window tomorrow, almost the same time, about a minute or so earlier than we were planning to launch this evening from Complex 39A in the Kennedy Space Center. So that's going to wrap up our webcast. We got the weather cooperated today. We got all the way down to 10 seconds. Uh, then we had an automated abort. Falcon 9 looks good. We're safing the rocket. We'll offload propellants. We'll take a look at what the data is and then figure out what our next launch opportunity is going to be. So I invite you to follow along on our social media pages as we know more and we can replan for when the next launch of Intelsat 35E will be from Launch Complex 39A on the Falcon 9. With that, we'd like to thank everyone who supported, especially the teams that have worked to get us to this point, and we hope to be able to come back maybe as early as tomorrow at the same time and bring you the launch of Intelsat 35E. But until our webcast resumes again, we're signing off for this afternoon. Thank you for watching, and good evening.